Thank you, worship team. Well, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 30. We're going to begin a new series for this month of March called Awaken. And the title of the message today is Awaken the Lion in Me. Now, the month of March is very much a transitional month. In fact, the old cliche is it comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. In a few weeks, we're going to leave winter and enter into springtime. Praise His holy, holy, blessed, righteous, awesome, glorious, wonderful name. Hallelujah. We need to stop and just pause and sila about that. Because the weather is very unpredictable in this month. It is a month where you almost have to be prepared for anything to happen. And I, I pray that this series on Awaken will prepare us spiritually. Because I believe as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. And so... In Proverbs chapter 30, verses 29 and 30, the Lord says, there are three things which are stately, go well in a march. Yes, even four. And he says, a lion is mighty among the beasts. And I like this. And does not turn away from any. So when you think about it, of all of the animals that the Lord created, and we know that there's many fierce animals, there's many that are a lot larger and huge and big animals, but of all the animals that the Lord created, He lists the lion as the most majestic the one that is fearless. Now, even Jesus is referred to as the Lion of Judah. And when you go to Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 1, it says, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So isn't it interesting that the Lord likens you and me to having the spirit of a lion within us? And I believe that that means that God has called you and I to be fearless. Amen? He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He doesn't want us to turn away from any. He wants us to realize who we are in Christ. And he wants that spirit of an overcomer to awaken, to rise up so that we can be all that God has created us to be. We need to let the lion within us roar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, number one, I want to awaken the authority within you. Hallelujah. You and I, as believers, have authority in Christ. And I believe too often it is underused or in some cases a lot of Christians have laid it down. 
I hear Christians say, well, Lord, you bind the devil. No, the Lord said, whatever you bind on earth, whatever you forbid is forbidden, and whatever you allow is allowed. We have an authority. We have the characteristics and the capacity that I don't believe God wants us to cower for anybody. Amen? Somebody say, I have authority. Now, why don't you say it with authority? Come on, say it again. And I'm going to use it. Yes, I'm going to use it. You and I have got to recognize that there are things in our life that are not of God. The enemy is loose. And he's doing his best to harass, to torment, to try to attack us. But thank God the greater one dwells within us. Hallelujah. Thank God that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We have authority, but we need to awaken that authority in Jesus' name. We need to rise up and be all that God has called us to be. Let's go in the New Testament to Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. The violent seize it with an authority. The violent have to fight for what God has promised us. You know, this Bible is a book of promises. But how many of you know the promises of God don't just come automatically? And the enemy's not going to sit back and fold his arms and watch you and I come into everything that God has promised us. We've got to be proactive. We've got to be aggressive. My second point is we've got to awaken the aggressiveness within us and go after everything that we know is ours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't settle for anything in your life that you know is not God's will. If there's probably one verse that underscores my passion in ministry, my passion as a preacher, it's John 10.10. 10. The thief comes. I hate the devil. I hate him with a passion because he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come. Oh, thank God he has come to destroy the works of the devil. He said, but I have come that you might have life to the full. Life more abundantly. I want to charge all of us, do not settle for anything less than what you have been promised. We have a destiny, and we're going to fulfill it. Our children have a destiny, and they are going to fulfill it. Our grandchildren have a destiny, and they will fulfill it. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. 
We awaken the authority within us. We awaken the aggressiveness to go after everything God has promised us. If God's promised you healing, don't settle for anything less. If he's promised you prosperity, don't settle for anything less. If he's promised you family salvation, don't settle for anything less. If he's promised you deliverance, don't settle for anything less. There's victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't settle. In Acts chapter 28 and verse 3, Paul was on a ship and a storm came and the ship got sidetracked. They ended up landing in Malta When they landed on the island, it says in verse 3, And Paul gathered a bundle of sticks, and laying them on the fire, a viper, a snake, came out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the foreigners saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, oh, No doubt this man's a murderer. Don't you love how people encourage you? (laughs) Who being saved from the sea, justice is not allowed to live. But I love verse 5. Then indeed, he shook off the creature into the fire, suffering no harm. But they expected him to be about to become inflamed or to fall down dead suddenly. But over much time, expecting and seeing nothing amiss happening to him, they changed their minds, and they said he was a god. He went from being a murderer to being a god, just like that. It's a miracle. But I love Paul's aggressive attitude. Why? Because earlier in Paul's life and ministry... He was given a word that he was going to go to Rome, that he was going to stand before Caesar. And so he realized that when this viper bit him and tried to take his life, that wasn't God's will for him. It wasn't his time. So he shook it off in the name of Jesus. And you and I have to realize that when the enemy tries to attack us and it is not God's will and there is more God asks for us to do, we have a destiny to fulfill. We got to shake it off in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Tell that person beside you, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. The heat is on. But I believe that the enemy's turned up the heat. Because he knows God's got great things in store for God's people. Hallelujah. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for us. Woo! The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Shake it off. Lord, we shake off anything in our life, in our bodies, in our minds, in our finances, in our families. That's not of you, God. Paul was aggressive. He had to be. Because God 
had great plans for his life. And I believe God's got great plans for you. I believe God's got great plans for our children. I do with all my heart. I believe that's why the enemy's doing his best to try to divert them from their destiny. But I got news for the devil. Hallelujah. The Lord's hand is on our children. And God's going to bring them through. Hallelujah. God's going to keep them on course. They will not be robbed of everything God has promised for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, give God a shout of praise in here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, how many of you know Satan is the great counterfeiter? He's not a lion, but the Bible says he goes about as a roaring lion, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But I love what Peter says in that next verse, 1 Peter 5, 7 and 8, resist him steadfastly in the faith. Somebody say resist him. Come on, say it again. Steadfastly. Sometimes you got to do it for more than one hour, more than one day, more than one week, more than one month, more than one year. But I'm here to tell you, don't believe the lies of the devil. Don't receive what he's trying to put on you. Don't accept what he's trying to steal from you. The devil is a liar and the father of lies, and his plans will come to nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you how he goes about as a roaring lion. Because he goes about lion. L-Y-I-N. He's a liar. There's no truth in him. So when he tells you you're not going to make it. When he tells you you're not going to live. When he tells you that bad report, you let him know circumstances don't matter. The only thing that matters is what God says. The truth is greater than the facts. And my God promised me and my God promised you the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when I was in the north side pastoring that small storefront church and the Lord said that he was going to enlarge the borders of our tent and after a season of prayer and fasting, we heard about this place and when we went and and met with the Sisters of Mercy, we didn't have any money. We didn't have a large congregation. We didn't have the things that they needed. But you know what we had? We had faith. Hallelujah. That if God said this was his will, that he would open doors for us that no man can close. And I'm telling you, I refused to settle for anything less than what God promised us. And thank God for the gift of faith. Thank God for trusting his word. Thank God for believing what God says over what the doctor says, over what the psychiatrist says, over what the lawyer says says, over what your neighbor says, over what the relatives say. Thank God that the truth is greater than the facts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you and I have to be aggressive. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violence sees it. We take it by force. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Paul writes, and he says, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is within you by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and thank God for a sound mind. Lord, we have the mind of Christ. We will not be tormented. We will not be lied to. We will not be deceived. For, for some of you, I'm here to tell you the greatest battle you have is the battle that's in your mind. It's in your thoughts. It's the enemy trying to trick and deceive you to believe his lies. But I pray that there's an anointing that awakens within you. And like a lion... You turn away from no one. You're fearless. You're not backing down. You're not believing his lies. Now, I turned on the news before coming to church early this morning, and they were interviewing this lady who was in, working in a grocery store. And she said, oh, the people are coming in, and they're just buying everything. She said, they're terrified. They're terrified. <laughs> And I thought, what a way to live your life. God doesn't want you to live terrified. He hasn't given you a spirit of fear. He doesn't want you to cower from what the enemy's trying to do in your life or in the life of one of your family members. God wants you to stand up like a lion in the authority of Jesus Christ and roar. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wants to awaken the authority within you. He wants to awaken within you the aggressiveness to go after everything God has promised you. And then he wants to awaken within you the anointing. There are gifts that are dormant within you. There are talents that are unused within you. There's potential that you have in Christ. And I pray it's awakened in the name of Jesus. Lord, wake it up! Wake up our faith! Wake up our gifts! Wake up the anointing! In Jesus' name. And there are things God has put on your life the enemy's tried to steal from you. But I'm here to tell you what the devil has stolen, my God is going to restore. Hallelujah. And I release right now, I awaken upon you an anointing of restoration. An anointing to restore gifts, restore resources, restore health, restore soundness of mind, restore finances, restore relationships, restore whatever the devil has stolen. God said he will restore the years, years. Years of what the enemy has stolen from you. There is, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost walking up and down the aisles here this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost just waiting for somebody to rise up and get a hold of what God is saying here today. Come on, somebody. Restore! 
restore, 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 restore. When David was at Ziglag, and then he and his men went out to battle, while he was out to battle, the enemy came and burned Ziglag and kidnapped all of their families. And you know what Ziglag was? Ziglag was part of David's inheritance. See, that's what the enemy wants. He wants to try to steal part of your inheritance. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. And he went and said, I want you to get me the priest. I want to hear what God has to say. Come on, we got to hear what God has to say. I said, we got to hear what God is saying about our situation. Don't believe the, 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 the lies of the devil. Don't listen to what other people are telling you. Get a hold of what God is saying. And use your authority. Awaken the aggressiveness and awaken the anointing. And in verse 8 of 1 Samuel 30, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Go! For you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I decree over your life that without fail, whatever the enemies tried to steal from you, from your children, from your grandchildren, you shall, I said you shall recover all, surely you shall recover all, your health, your finances, your ministry, your gifts, the anointing, you shall recover all, hallelujah, this is the month awaken he's going to awaken us to be all that he has called us to be let's all stand up together hallelujah